All right. Episode 27. We're about to start recording. And let's go. Hey, welcome back. Thank you for being here. It's me, Stephen Safik. I like today's question a lot, and I want you to ask more questions like it. You know, if you're someone that hasn't left a question yet, it takes like five seconds max, and you get to see it transformed into an entire podcast episode. So it's pretty cool. And it's askstevie.show. Just go drop a question. I got a backlog of about 20, 30 questions. So I can't guarantee that I'll pick your answer, but it's fun and it's free nonetheless. Anyway, today's question is, what shitty things are alphabet agencies and secret societies up to? And secret is in quotes, I guess, implying that we all seem to know these days that there's factions of individuals that make plans in secret. And that happens at all different levels. Now, this question also is like two questions in one because intelligence agencies and secret societies are two separate things. There's overlap, which I'll get into, but I kind of have to answer a third broader question in order to answer both at once. So I'm gonna open with a teaching about the Pareto Principle. You've probably heard this as the 80-20 rule. The Pareto Principle, also known as the 80-20 rule, states that roughly 20% of anything is responsible for 80% of that thing's results. So like, you may have a closet full of clothes. You probably only wear 20% of those clothes 80% of the time, right? So 20% of your clothes are responsible for 80% of your wardrobe, sort of, or your outfits. So this happens everywhere. You know, uh, in any workforce, 20% of the individuals are typically doing 80% of the actual heavy lifting. Then it's flipped around. A different 20% are doing 80% of the conceptual work, the abstractions, and the things like that. So I have to think of what to say. <clears throat> the reason I'm sharing this, should I go back and re-explain? Should I go back and re-explain? No. That's probably fine. Okay. So the reason I bring this up is because in a secret society, which I'm not in by the way, so I've got to use this principle to guesstimate stuff. I don't have any sort of data nor firsthand experience. And I'm certainly not going to just trust secondhand sources about secret societies. I mean, unless I've got leverage over the source of information, there's really no reason to even shake much of a stick at any of that stuff. That being said, I'd say probably 80% of people in so-called secret societies, which let's be frank, it's various Masonic and Freemasonic lodges. Some are tied to the Central Lodge. Some are more offshoots. You've got all sorts of other brotherhoods and sisterhoods, Order of the Eastern Star, um, Golden Dawn organizations, and anyone can start a group anytime, no matter if they're in an alphabet agency or not. So you've got kinds of alt-right, you know, uh, kind of preppers, probably. We've probably got social justice warriors, like, you know, feigning different acts to 
you know, everyone's trying to influence society any way they can. And this leads to secretive groups popping up in pretty much any walk of life is what I'm trying to say. That being said, 80% of people in so-called secret societies are good, normal people. That's where the Pareto principle comes into play. 80% of people in alphabet agencies are good, normal people. But here's the trick. That 20%, but because people in secret societies are not centralized, they're actually people in all walks of life, business, government jobs, private workforce jobs. I mean, anything, teachers, doctors, lawyers, blue collar workers, janitors, trash truck drivers, anyone can be in a secret society. So that 20% that does bad stuff, that 20% that you know enacts plans that most of us would probably say are, are not cool to do, they're everywhere. They're peppered everywhere. So that's that. And then if you apply this principle to alphabet agencies, the 20% of people in alphabet agencies who basically either fell victim to traps or agreed to, you know, I would say sell your soul, but they would probably say just, you know, do what they have to do, just doing their job, so on. Anyway, it's 20% of them that could be spying on us, doing weird, perverted things, 20% that probably into dark stuff so the government is able to keep a tight leash on them. Um, so 80% of people in alphabet agencies are great people that care about their fellow citizens and they want to stop bad people from doing bad things. And they probably don't even know that 20% of their coworkers are living a different way of life. And the 80% of folks in secret societies probably have no idea that 20% of their fellow brothers, sisters, or both are involved in unsavory activities. And it's just kind of how I believe it shakes out. So what are they up to? Well, whatever they want. I've kind of alluded to certain things. They, they could be up to, you know, trying to preserve themselves. Everyone's after safety and security, ultimately. Everyone wants to feel seen and loved and safe and secure. So there's different ways to get there. Some people try to get there by controlling the world, controlling others. Some people get there by um, engaging and distracting themselves. They just ignore the problem. And, and so whatever, you know, whatever a person's thing is, they can do it together, whether it's good, like I think 80% of the stuff that's going on is, or whether it's bad, like maybe 20% of it is. The thing is, material leverage is amplified in that 20%. You're kind of working against spirit you're kind of working against natural law. So you get these incredible short-term results, boosted short-term results, whether it's modifying an individual's behavior a certain way in 3D, whether it's making money off of drugs, that 20% of activities is high leverage for quick bang for your buck, to get stuff done. But it's, those people die young. Those people are, you know, in gangs or <clears throat> involved in drugs or crash and burn out. Sometimes they kill themselves from the suppressed trauma. And so it's, when I say different way of life, it's, it's really a different way of interfacing with natural law. But you can imagine what they might be up to. I don't need to get into any more details. We're running out of time. Thank you so much for listening. Don't forget to ask me a question. Catch you all tomorrow. Be blessed. That was really good. Let's end this recording. And uh, if you're on YouTube, go down and read that caption. Thank you.